Grace and I were born in Argentina, born and raised in Argentina, and uh, we got married there. We had our four children, and then we moved to Spain. We lived there for 15 years, and then we came to America to enjoy this wonderful country. We became citizens. Actually, uh, I'm w w we, we were trying to become Texans, the y'all and all of this. <laughs> and last night, I graduated as a Louisiana, Louisiana and eating, eating those crawfish. It was a big experience for us. And well, but the title of my message tonight or today is the family. The family. The family. Say with me, the family. <laughs> and but I have an extended title, an extended title, but I need to read it for you. <coughs> How the extended title of my message to today is how to heal a broken hearted with bipolar syndrome, a schizophrenic with self inflicted injuries. <laughs> that is the extended title, okay? <laughs> can, can I, I can say it again because how to heal a broken hearted with bipolar syndrome, a schizophrenic with self inflicted injuries. That is the title of my message today. What is the connection between the short version, the family, <laughs> and the extended version, how to heal the broken hearted with bipolar syndrome, schizophrenic, with self-inflicted injuries. And that is, that uh, lesson is the last one of a series that I was teaching um, about emotional healing. Emotional healing. How many of us need emotional healing? Or many times we, we have needed emotional healing. And we need on a daily basis. But that's why um, I chose a passage in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Um, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones when he saw Jesus from afar. He ran and worshipped him. Do you see the broken hearted? I don't believe that the unclean spirit means a demoniac possession, but what about a mental disorder produced by all the reasons that we have to get a mental disorder, like guilt, condemnation, accusation, lack of genuine love. We don't receive love or we don't give love. There are so many reasons that we, can, we could get a broken heart, heart, or we can become broken hearted. But he was also uh, what I call uh, uh, bipolar syndrome. He was sometimes 
up in the mountains, and sometimes down in the tombs. How many of you have been that way? One day in the heavenlies, saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, we love you, how good you are to me. And sometimes, day and night, it doesn't matter, eh? 24-7, you were like me in the hell. Oh, my God, what is happening to me? What a wretched man I am. Paul said that, okay? Well, then, bipolar. One day up in the mountains, one day down in the tomb. A schizophrenic. I had a son. We had a son that was a schizophrenic. And the worst a schizophrenic. They, they call paranoid, paranoid schizophrenia, which means the worst of the worst. He ran out of our house and went to the mountains and hit, and hit with himself with stones and briars and he made, he, he was a self-inflicted injured. And, and the doctors and the psychiatrists, they, they said to us, it is impossible to heal your son. It is absolutely impossible. He had to be recruited in a mental institution with a lot of medication. And by the power of God, he is perfectly well. He is seated, clothed, and in his right man, mind. Now, right now, we were, we were, uh, were talking to him la, uh, yesterday because it was his birthday, and he is perfectly well. In a, in a Christian association where, where he is ministering to others because it's necessary to put out life in other people. The reason we want to be emotional healed is not for us, it's not only for us to live abundantly. It is absolutely necessary if we, as we are minister of this gospel of the kingdom and take this gospel to the world, we need to be in perfect emotional health. Amen? That's why... I chose this concept or this topic of emotional healing. And this is the last lesson about that. And I chose this because I think that you are perfectly well emotionally. That you don't need the other seven lessons. <laughs> and you don't even need this one. But what I'm trying to do is to give you some tools, some remedy for you to minister to others, that they are desperate in, in the need of emotional healing. Probably they are either bipolar or schizophrenic or they are self-inflicted injured. And I found a remedy here from the Lord, from the Spirit that I want to give to you today. First of all, what we need to do is understand that we have a gospel, such a good news, that we need to, to find it, to pick it up from the Bible. I was talking to my dear friend, Shep, and I asked him, what, is the, what version of the Bible you use to preach? And he said to me, he is a heretic. <laughs> so he said to me, Carlos, I don't preach with the Bible. I preach out of my heart. Is that correct? And I, I love it. Because in the last 
three years, I, I was feeling myself a heretic. Why? Because uh, I was taught that the Bible is inerrant, that the Bible is all inspired by God. And when I started understanding that all the scripture which is inspired from God is profitable. But not all the Bible, all that is this written here. I don't think that Psalm 137 is true. Let, let me read it for you. You probably you know Psalm 137 is a, is a wonderful song I love. And it says, by the rivers of Babylon. You remember that? I'm not a singer, but <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Psalm 137, happy, verse 9, happy the one who takes and dashes your little one against the rock. Blessed are those. Blessed are thee if you dash your, your little ones, your babies upon the rock. That is not my father. That is not our Abba. We need to, to select. I, I love what Mike said. We need, or Caleb said, uh, we need sometimes, we need to say crap. We need to say <laughs> bullshit. I, I learned that, that word from my favorite teacher, Mike Miller. Ah, by the way, Caleb is here. You need to read Saving God by Caleb Miller. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful book. I am translating it to, to Spanish. And it's such a wonderful book. Uh, he deals with the issue of hell. He goes to every scripture in, 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 in the Bible that talks about hell. And uh, you will find that it's awesome. Because we were taught, or, or our doctrine is, uh, the Bible is about heaven and hell. If you don't go to heaven, you go to hell. But we have misinterpreted the, wo the, uh, the, um, the word in, in several passages, many passages. Like, for example, uh, the full rich, the, the, the one who said, oh, uh, I have everything. I, uh, what I do is I will pull down my barns and I will build up new ones. And I, 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 let, let, let me read that for you. It's in Luke um, 12 when it says, verse 16, it says, Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plent plentifully. <laughs> and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? Remember that his, his, the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. Wow. And, ah, and he thought, within himself saying, what, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crop? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself as if not rich toward God. And I preach about this passage many times when I was in my spiritual wilderness. 40 years in my spiritual wilderness. 
believing that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, etc., etc. But I preach, oh, that man was, uh, is in hell. He, he loved riches, now he's in hell. No, that is not what it's saying here. It is a passage that uh, warns about anxiety, worry. Um, it's a passage that um, warns us to covetousness, not to be covetous. Do not covet anything. Then we need to learn how to read the Bible and pick up from there the gospel, the truth, something good to us. Like, for example, when uh, Ecclesiastes 3, 11, it says, God has made everything wonderful, beautiful, and has put eternity in your heart. Except that. Let me read it for you. Ecclesiastes 3, Eleven. <clears throat> he has made everything beautiful in this time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one, no one can find, can find out the work that God does, does from beginning to end. And we know that he wants us to know everything that he has prepared for us. In, in 1 Corinthians, he said uh, things that eyes has, has not seen or ear has not heard, have not heard, are not, not even uh, came to the heart of man, are the things that God has prepared for those who he loves. But he has revealed to us through the Spirit. The Spirit is in us. He put out his Spirit upon all flesh. And when we go to, when we go to the Young Literal Translation, in that verse it says, in, in Ecclesiastes 3, it says, with, instead of accept that, it, it says, without which. Without which, which means he has put eternity in their heart. Eternity is necessary for us to understand from the beginning to the end. Without which, without eternity, no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Then we need to go to every passage and discover the beauty of our Lord. Actually, in, in previous lessons about emotional healing, when I, when I was dealing with the subject of divorce or the, the big problem that we have uh, in relationships, one of the er areas I work is the area of beauty. Beauty. We need to redeem beauty. We need to redeem the understanding of beauty. What, what is real beauty? That wonderful verse that we all know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to redeem it, to redeem the cosmos. And that word cosmos, which is 168 times in, in the Bible, 167 times is related to three different concepts. Cosmos, the geographic world, the, the earth. Cosmos, the people who abide, who abide in the earth. And the, the third meaning is the system, the, the worldly system, 
All of them has been redeemed Amen. by the work of Jesus. When he said, it is finished, you were made perfect in your own mind because you were perfect from the beginning. Wow. Amen? Wow. Now, the, the last time, the, the, only, the only one uh, meaning that I have lost is, remember, these three concepts of cosmos are uh, in total is 167 times. But the, the 168, that word cosmos is in, let, let me show you. First Peter 3 and 3. First Peter, I don't even get into my message today. <laughs> It's just an introduction. What I'm trying to <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is that we need to go to the scripture for our own emotional healing. To discover our own holiness, righteousness, our own perfection, and even our own beauty. If we are if we want to be prepared to minister to others. First uh, Peter chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Do not let your adornment be merely outward. That word adornment, other versions meant, uh, used to beauty, is the word cosmos. And cosmos is the root word for our word cosmology, where we get the beauty. But cosmos was redeemed, and we need to understand that the beauty of God has been redeemed. Can you see the beauty of God in yourself? Can you see the beauty of God in your spouse, in your children, in your parents, in your friends, and in your enemies. Amen. 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 Then we need to we need to to review what we thought. I I was telling last night to Mike. Uh, he says. 30% of what I am preaching probably is not true. <laughs> but, but, he, <laughs> but he said, yeah, but he said, probably, I, I don't know what is not true. And that's why I, he cannot say what is not true. <laughs> but I am, in my own case, I was, I was preaching in my spiritual wilderness, I was preaching in, in the church as a friend of mine here in Houston. And uh, after I met this wonderful gospel that I am preaching today, I went back to that church and tell the whole congregation, 100% of what I have taught you is a lie. <laughs> wow! Wow! They have never invited me anymore there. <laughs> but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They will finally get into it. And on and on and on. Like, for example, when uh, I learned the series uh, about, from Mike, about John 14. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And I thought my whole life that Jesus was to heaven to build up mansion for me, for you, for everyone. And when I, I die, I will go there. But through that teaching, yes, I... I came to the realization that we are the house of God. We are the house of our Father. 
He dwells in us. We are the many mansions that he prepared. We are many. Who are we? That is one question. And, and probably I need to get into my message. What time? How are, how are we doing with the time? Okay. Ah, okay. Excellent. Yes, I have to go into my message. Because my message is about the broken hearted. Uh, the Bible calls unclean spirit. I don't believe that. For me, it's a, it's a very distressed, anxious, overwhelmed, burdened with many, many things. I don't know. Probably he was abused when he was a child. I don't know. I, I do know what happened to my, my own son. 17 years old. Perfect in everything. A wonderful mind. He was doing, he was finishing high school and next year he had to to go into the college and he was perfect and suddenly he lost his mind completely. Paranoid schizophrenia. Three years of heart treatment. No results at all. He was chained in the bed because he assault, assaulted anyone that uh, appears in. And we finally found out what happened with him. Guilt and condemnation in his soul. Because he had been uh, watching pornography and he knew that I hate it. We hate it that and we taught them you would go to hell if you watch those things distressed anxious overwhelmed burdened broken hearted how many of you i personally was broken hearted a lot in my in my life when I saw that the Bible is inerrant, and, and I saw that taking the rod against my children was, uh, was a, a godly thing, and it was not. And I abused them in many ways, trying to get them the best education. I was brokenhearted, and he healed me. Bipolar syndrome. One day up, I'm up in the mountain, another day down in the depths. Hell and heaven every day. Sometimes I was with my heavenly wife, perfect. And sometimes I was a hellishly husband, etc., etc. Many of us need the restoration of beauty. Understanding what is the beauty of your life, the beauty of your marriage, the beauty of every relationship you have, the beauty of everything you enjoy. And not let and do not let condemnation, guilt to overwhelm you. Because if, if, if you do so, you can be demon-possessed with an unclean spirit. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit is clean. You are holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight, in my sight, in our sight, be in yours. schizophrenic, running to and fro, 
without control, untamed. We remember that with our, with our son, Eduardo. We remember that one time my wife and I were uh, driving through uh, in Houston. And he, uh, it was in a regular street. We were uh, 35, 40 miles per hour. And he opened up the, the, the door and he wanted to jump into the street and be injured. And my wife was holding him tight while, because uh, he was very strong. And uh, while he was holding him, while we, I, I, I was calling 911 for help. And, and two police cars were, they, they understood the, the problem and they, they were following us to help us. And, and they were uh, telling me instruction how to do, how to stop in, uh, in the light. They will, and we know what is to be schizophrenic, but you don't need to be a schizophrenic to, uh, to, to run to and fro without being tamed. You don't know what to do. And suddenly you understand the beauty of the redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he said it is finished, he gave us all that is necessary for us to enjoy life. And sometimes you need to, 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 to start praying in the spirit and say, oh, Rakenda Araba, Shekabata, oh, Shiri Kabaha. Sometimes you don't because he knows you. He knows everything that you need. And the same way that he abides in you, in me, he abides in everyone. He abode in my son, Eduardo, and he knew everything he needed. At that time, we didn't know much about this message. Schizophrenia, self-inflicted injuries. If you read the passage of Mark 5, you'll find that he was, he injured himself with stones, stones. The law was written in so stones. Don't be injured by the law. Any law. No, 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 I'm not talking just the Old Testament law. Any law that you impose upon yourself. Try to live in the freedom that we have been made free. Real freedom. <coughs> We can, we, can, we can inflict injuries to ourselves. We can inflict injuries to others, to our families, to our loved ones. When we superimpose our own laws against the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. From the law of your own behavior, your own understanding. Because the only understanding that our Father wants us to have is His, which is perfect, perfect beauty. Now, the last misunderstanding of, that I had for, for today's message, I have thousands <laughs> of misunderstandings, <laughs> but for today's message. In Mark 5, let me read the, the final of that of that teaching of that um, story. Uh, 
verse 15 in, in Mark 5. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been, who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and is in his right mind and they were joyful. Oh no, sorry. They were afraid. <laughs> they didn't get. They had to be joyful. Why they were they were afraid? Okay, I think that the reason they were afraid was another misunderstanding. Let, let me go a little bit a um, couple of verses before. Um, verse 6. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. I love it. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I, I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the men and clean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. That is the last, the last word from Jesus. What is your name? And we understand, I, I, probably you know, but. I understood my whole life that he was talking to the spirit uh, because the spirit answered, legion, we are legion. Well, I love the question of Jesus. What is your name? Do you understand that he is restoring identity? What is your name? I, I know, I, I am fully convinced that what Jesus is saying, you are my beloved son. You are part of my family. I have given you my name. But my whole life, I thought that he was speaking to the spirit, unclean. No. Why? Because it is the last statement from Jesus. What is your name? Do you remember what is the title of my message today? The family. Why? Because the family, understanding the concept of family, will heal all your schizophrenic moods all your bipolar syndromes, all your broken-hearted heart, and all your self-inflicted injuries. Why? Because we need to understand this. I, I, I was so glad to listen to, to Caleb when he said, the, the table that the spirit pre prepared for him include his enemies. And not only include his enemies, transform his enemies in friends. Transform his enemies in family. Can you do so? Can you start thinking about your family? Not only these wonderful people that I love, that we are like a family reunion here, but also the Muslim across the street, the atheist next door, the prostitute and the drug addict and even ISIS. If we understand this concept of family, we can go to them and show love that is the only way to transform lives. If we understand this concept of family, we, were, we will be healed. 
and we will show such love that is such unconditional love that will transform the world. And we will be like the first century church that they were accused to turn the whole world around. And then, when this gospel will be preached in all the nation, and I know that you are the ones that will do this, the end will come. All the family will be breathing the abiding of Jesus, abiding of Christ in, in you, the hope of glory, and then eternity for everyone. Amen. We need to understand that, and my message is done, but because it is 11.15, but as, as Jamie gave me a couple of minutes, uh, we need to go to the scripture and learn that, because I, my whole life I thought that the family of God is a church, yeah. the ecclesia, yeah. ecclesia. Now when I was translated the mirror, into Spanish. Well, I couldn't translate the mirror to Greek because <laughs> <laughs> it comes from Greek. But I learned a lot of Greek. Ecclesia, ek, origin, source. Ecclesia, to give you a name. Ecclesia, to, to bear the name of Christ to bear the name of God, to bear the name, to be part of the family. Uh, Ephesians 3, 15, the whole family in heaven and on earth is named after God, after Christ, after our creator, after our redeemer, can we understand that we are family? We and the whole world. When this gospel will be preached, the ecclesia will be the whole world. Can we see with the eyes of faith the ecclesia of the world? It will give you. It will give me total healing. Not only physical, but emotional and in every aspect of our life. When we understand the beauty, the cosmos that was changed by Jesus, when we, when we search for that, for that beauty, it changes everything in our relationships. I can even like my brother Tony, <laughs> because I know his beauty. It's very different. But it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying. And Jesus, Jesus, and this is my last verse. And Jesus showed us that way. That we also, I, I every time I say we, is because of my English is not so good yet. But I mean I. I misunderstood this verse. In in, let's go to uh, Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3, verse 31. Then, then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle of those who sat about him and said, Here, my mother and my brothers, my sister, my cousins, my uncles, my grandparents, here. And I misinterpreted 
that verse many times, and I said, wow, we, the church, oh, we who believes in Jesus, we are the family. Uh, yes, Jesus, is, we are here. No. He is not, in him there is no exclusion. It's inclusion. He is, it, it is a, when, we, when we understand the first principle of love, we can read this verse and say, what Jesus was saying is, no, no, yeah, yeah, this is my family. Okay, but you are my family too. All of you are my family. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful morning. Thank you for your perfect love and the beauty that you restored. Thank you for this tool when you said, while you have opportunity, make good to all. Especially to the household of faith. Wow. The household of faith is not just you. The whole, the whole household of faith or the family of faith is the whole world because the whole world was reconciled by not our faith, it was reconciled by the faith of Jesus Christ. And that was the verse that I didn't read for you, which is Galatians 6 and 10, because we need to do good to all. Amen. Not just people, to all. I was talking to my dear friend, Riley. Where is Riley? Riley. And he, he thank you, Riley. He, he, he let me share with you this. He does good to all. He, he lived in Houston, in a place where somebody is uh, racing uh, uh, horses. And he went to those horses and feed them, the ones that were abandoned, because he wanted to do good to all, especially to people. I love that. Are you ready to go out from here and consider family to everyone and treat them how would you treat your lovely brother or sister, your lovely wife? Our husband, your lovely granddaddy. It should be amazing. And I think that this, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.